Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Roma and Football Manager 2019. I'm Ater, and today we have big news. Huge changes has been going on through the summer because this is, of course, the first episode of the new season. But before we get to that, I need to mention two things. First off, uh, one of my neighbors are playing music, and uh, I don't think the microphone can pick it up because I can barely hear it. But uh, if you hear some weird background noise, it's probably one of my neighbors playing some guitar or something like that. Uh, other than that, I, I've got myself a new computer screen, and it's uh, bigger and uses uh, another resolution compared to my old one. So I don't know if this is going to affect the video I'm recording right now. So this will be a little bit of trial and error, and hopefully this video won't be completely messed up. But, uh, well, if, if that happens, you know why, and uh, I'll have to work with the settings for, for the next episode. But yeah, huge things have been going on during the summer. Uh, since that's the devastating loss in uh, the Champions League final. And I've decided to start using a completely different formation. And as you probably know, so one of my, the main things in my formation for, since the first season have been wingers. And my new s formation doesn't use wingers. And you know, I had some really, really, really good world-class wingers. Well, things had to change because of this. So let's take a look first off uh, at the transfer window. And the first transfer is um, nothing new to you guys. I told you about him uh, in a previous episode. He got uh, transfer listed from uh, um, Man City and for 29 mil. I feel like it's basically a steal. Fantastic deal. And uh, I mean, he's really good and he will be rotating with the Tonali as our defensive midfielder. And the next signing is a free transfer and it's a striker. He's not fantastic at all, but it's pretty decent. And this is like one of those free transfer signings I've done in the past where I sign him and then maybe sell him on after a season or two, depending on what happens. I feel like he's a player that could have become world class, but because uh, the way uh, the AI, the clubs has been uh, have developed him, he haven't reached his full potential. Because as you can tell uh, in the save, he's been at uh, PSG. And uh, PSG, well, he haven't got much playing time. I think that's how affected his development. But he's for free. I'm happy with that one. Next one is a huge name that's probably going to surprise a few of you. And it's another free signing. And it's Iguain, as you can tell here. Iguain, look at these statistics. Fantastic. And the thing with him is um, he left his club as a free transfer. And uh, that meant he was clubless. So I picked him up at a one-year deal. One year. And I'm only paying him 38k a week. He was making, I think it was like 300k a week at Juve. Something like that. And now we are playing, paying him 38k. And he accepted a backup status. Which means basically we have a world-class striker. That yes, he is declining. Especially at his physical deals. But look at his mentals. They are insane. And even his technicals are insane. 19 to finishing. And we got him for free. We can use him for a season. And then let him go. We are paying basically almost nothing. And he will accept sitting on the bench. I think it's a fantastic signing. And I can tell you guys a little special deal. It's been a very weird start of the season. Because normally in, in the previous seasons. Uh, our first game has happened either the same day as where the transfer window closes. Or the day after the transfer window closes. This year has been really messed up. The season started much earlier than the transfer window. And it's been so weird. We have had friendlies in between the, the match games. So I actually played two, two uh, league games. And we will take a look at results very soon. But Iguain started one of those two league games. And he scored a hat-trick, 9.5 rating. So considering we got him for free, I feel like his, that hat-trick has already paid off uh, everything. But they are the only main signings we have done. The other kids, like the, this is like youngsters we, we got uh, for the future, maybe. But the main thing, we have sold Indo to Barcelona for 104 million. Because, I mean, he's fantastic, I love him, and I would never have sold him if he were using wingers this season. But we're not using wingers, and as you can tell, he's very weak at other positions, which means he wouldn't play much and his value would decline. So, yeah, we sold him, and I love him, he's been fantastic for us, but he have wanting to go to other clubs for a long time. And I think it's a fair deal, I mean, they're playing 300k a week, we were paying him like 100k or something. 
And other than that, we sold on Munir also. Munir, as you may remember, we got him as, as a free transfer. We used him for a season, then we loaned him out last season, and now we sold him. So we basically got we got him for free, we sold him for 50 mil. I'm very happy with that deal. Because with both uh, Egistine and Egoin as the strikers, we didn't need him. So we basically made money for him, and uh, yeah, good deal. And the final one is Ansossi. Of course, he's been brilliant for us. He's still really, really good at look statistics, but he will turn 34 soon. And with Locatelli joining us, I felt Locatelli is the future, and Sossi is the past. So we are happy for all the things we've done for him. But it's the right time to let him go, and we got some money out of it. And he also moved back to France, which he said, well, a lot of clubs that wanted him, but he picked them because he wanted to go home. So I think it's a fair deal. Uh, and other than them, uh, of course, since we got rid of Inda, we wanted to do the same with Kluivert because he's in the same position. But uh, we did actually didn't manage to sell him. The only offers we got for was for like 50k, uh, 50 mil, which is weird because last season I was getting like eight, 70, 80 mil offers for him. So uh, since he won't be playing for us, I decided to loan him out. So he keeps on playing games, he keeps on developing. And uh, then if he decides to go back to Wingers next season, he will re rejoin us. If not, maybe we can sell him during the next summer. But another player, I love him. Normally, I would never have sold him. It's just because of the change of formation. Otherwise, I think he's fantastic. And yes, I said, I would never have sold him. It's been great for us. But uh, we'll loan him out for this season. And that's basically it. And that means I have so much money. Because other than Locatelli, it's only free transfers. Take a look at my bank. We have over 200 million. And I actually tried to spend some of this money i made offers for quite a few players where i offer like 100 mil or even over 100 mil uh, for strikers i tried to sign uh, P uh, pellegri i tried to sign uh, Bellotti, but uh, the club wanted like 200 mil for them and so on but i made offers for like 100 120 140 mil for them i tried to sign a uh, box-to-box midfielders i made offers for like 100 mil for quite a few mid midfielders whose normal value is far less than 100 mil so i really tried to sign players but it was really hard either they weren't interested in joining us or the club I and mean, as i said like i'm not going to pay 180 mil for a player that's valued 40 mil that that's not going to happen so we have a lot of money and i'm willing to spend all of it if we can find the right players but they need to be willing to join us and right now uh, the transfer window is closing tonight so uh maybe maybe something can happen but i wouldn't count on it but uh, i'm going to keep scouting players and maybe we can get somebody during the end of your window. Because as I said, I'm not holding this one just for fun. I want to spend it, but I can't spend it on players that the clubs won't sell. And that brings us to the new tactic. This is the new main formation. We are using three strikers. I love to last season, we went from one striker to two striker. And now once we take the next steps, we are going from two strikers to three strikers. And uh, yeah, that's the reason we are not using wingers. And also have a backup formation that I will consider using against tough, strong teams when we play them away. And that's not that that was last season's formation. This formation, I'm considering using a strikerless formation away in some tough games to see how it worked. Actually, back in I think it was Football Manager 2016, I did a Liverpool say where I had so much fun playing with a strikerless formation. And uh, it worked really well. I have no idea if it was going to work well now, but I'm willing to test it uh, maybe in some difficult uh, away game. It's going to be very interesting. Uh, but yeah, that's the way we're going to roll. Other than our team, just something worth mentioning. I think in the defense, uh, Santona Pellegrini has been injured. Barbos is a name that you might not be familiar with. He's been loaned out. He joined us, I think it was two seasons ago, one season ago. Lo loaned out to Torino last season. And because of... Uh, Santon being injury, I didn't loan him out during the summer. He's been playing in this position now. And that means I'm going to have three players in this position. I'm not sure if I'm going to what I'm going to do. I kind of feel like it's maybe it's time for Santon to move on because uh, Barbosa is at similar level, even maybe not a, maybe a little bit stronger. And he's only 19, so we'll keep on developing. But for now, because of the injury, they are we have th three players that can then play in that, uh, that formation. And also in the midfield, there is. Uh, Right now, Korik is back. Uh, he played, as you know, for a, quite a few seasons, played a lot of games. Then last season, he was loaned out. I kind of feel like we don't have room for him. 
trying to both loan him out and sell him, but nobody's interested, which I think is weird because it's pretty good. So right now he is still with us. Is there anyone else I want to mention? Yeah, Marin, also winger that maybe sell, maybe loan out. Right now, nobody have been interesting in either. So maybe we will use him in some weird position if uh, if we can't loan him out. And that's, I think, is it. Morilla is back also. Uh, Morilla last season was loaned out. And now we're going to use him because he can play as a striker. Even though these ratings are pretty bad. He's 16 in finishing. And if you use the other formation with no strike, you're going to be perfect as a shadow striker. And also one defender. Oh, so many things to, to, to mention here. And uh, no, central defender, we signed him a few seasons ago. He's been loaned out two, for two seasons. Now we will be using him. But yeah, I've been talking a lot, far, far too much. So we definitely need to play. And before we play, we, we, we need to take a look at the schedule. Because today, as we've done so many times before, we're starting the first episode of Win a Game versus Juve. And as you can tell, we played two games in the league. And it was actually another friendly, I believe, that got cancelled versus AX. We would have another friendly here messed up with everything else. No, it wasn't AX. We, we played AX. But it was one friendly that got cancelled. So a very rare schedule where we started playing so early. I mean, look at this. The first league game was back in July. That's, that's unheard of. Uh, so I'm not sure what's up, but that's why I decided to, to skip the first league games for an episode and do Juve because the transfer window is, is closing tonight and Juve is a brilliant way to, to start the season. But oh boy, I have talked far too much. There's game on and uh, yeah, the, the Juve team. And this is going to be the first test because as you saw from, from the preseason and the first two games, we have uh, dominated everything and... Uh, this will be the first real test, the first time we use this formation against an actual big and strong team. So I'm very curious to see how it works out. And uh, of course we have their former player, Iguain on the bench. Could be a perfect super sub coming on against his former team if you're struggling. Maybe can uh, do some bad stuff to them. But here is Juvis Ronaldo. Come on lads, focus, focus, focus. There's a man there. <laughs> Interesting name. Come on, lads. I don't like this. Where is this? Too many Juve players. Too close to our box. Oh, brilliant say there by Donnarumma. But yeah, clearly can't be pleased with them getting the first highlight. And yeah, as I said before, new screen, new resolution. I have no idea if uh, if it will affect the recording. So hopefully things look great for you. But we will know after this episode. Oh, Schick is very close to give us lead, the lead there. I'm not sure if the goalkeeper saved it or if it hit uh, the woodwork. But it was uh, really close. And here is bad, bad, bad news. Really bad news. A little bit of replay. Of course, it's a brilliant free kick. Definitely world class. But uh, very unfortunate for us. Looking at statistics, we are creating more chances than them. And as I say that, of course, they get two chances. Yeah, so it's such a huge difference because, as I said, every single game we played, both during the preseason, but also the first two league games, we completely dominated. We scored, like, so many goals and so on. Why did you do that, Cristiante? You weren't under pressure. You didn't have to clear it. This is completely unnecessary. We wouldn't have gotten into this position if you just would have... Had a little... Why? Donnarumma, that was so very weird. Say, Come on, lads, now you're making me nervous. But maybe this could be a counter-attack. Here's Chick. Can you find somebody? Now we get to see this replay instead. That wasn't as an exciting as exciting as a counter-attack. But yeah, this is a huge difference compared to, to the first two games we played this season. Where we dominated and had like chance after chance after chance. Now we can't be placed. It's time to go aggressive. We are behind. At home, we definitely expect something much better. They all agree, looking motivated, fired up. Brilliant uh, reaction we want. Uh, now let's go to the tactic screen. Do we want to change anything? Uh, can we t even tell you to use soft tackles? Yes, we can. We don't want to have you sent off, Locatelli. Um, yeah, we are not going to be positive. We're going to be attacking. That's a thing I've been experimenting. We actually played attacking, I think, last game. And it worked better. So maybe I forgot to change that or something. Come on, lads. I believe in you. 
But the clock just takes away. Nothing for either of the teams. I don't think we've seen a chance for any of the teams. And then it's Pereira with the corner. All the way back for Cristante. Cristante, Cristante. Locatelli, Locatelli, Cristante. With a Ooh, look at that one, you beauty. That is world class. A real power shot. Take, take a look at the replay. A very beautiful goal. And we are back in business. Pereira over the corner for Cristante. Going for Locatelli. Back to Cristante now. Take a look at this finisher. Fantastic. I'm really, really pleased with that one. But uh, of course, we are not satisfied with the draw. We want the, the win. So focus, lads. We can do this. We can use it. We can. Uh, and here's Nicolas. Nicolas. Look at uh, Fines. Go for the chick for our for for Chris. Oh, it's his second goal, and it's another masterpiece from Cristante. My gosh, what a goal! I think that was was even a volley or a half volley or something like that. Chris Dante is on fire today. What's up with these finishers? First I thought it was going to go something, but yeah, look at this. Oh, that finisher. Uh, I can't can't even get words to describe it. How how good that one was. But I think it's time for some subs. Then we have some guys that definitely haven't lived up to our expectations, and surprisingly, one of them is Arp. And Arp and both Arp and Schick. Um, I think we are going to, uh, to actually replace both of them. We are going to go with Barbosa and uh, that way around. Now Arp with Barbosa, and then we want to replace Schick with Iguain, the former Juve player. And he will be a deep lying forward. And now, Iguain, this is your moment to shine against your former club. I believe in you, and uh, I don't want you to get a highlight, come on. All the way back to their goalkeeper. Come on, lads, we can win it. We can do something here. Turn it around, make it an uh, interesting counter-attack. They are working their way towards our goal, and I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Oh, brilliant save from Donnarumma. Keeps us in the lead. Actually, I was talking about in last episode Juve's finances and, and they kind of didn't sell anybody during the summer and they signed players for, I think, last like 8 mil or something. So I'm still very confused though uh, about how they are managing financially. But here is Nicolas, the only striker we kept on! And he shows why! And it's actually his sixth goal of the season. It was sensational. He scored four goals, I believe, in the first league game. And uh, yeah, last season I was a little bit disappointed with him. It was his first real season for us because the season before he was loaned out to Sassuolo and he was uh, scored the same amount of goal as Arp for Sassuolo uh, as, as top goal scorer, but Arp had less uh, games played. And now this season, he started off the first game with four goals and now he's back in the goal scoring sheet again. And here's Nicolas, now maybe he's going for an assist. Look at this, there's a lot of plays in the box and here is Iguain! His fourth goal of the season, of a free transfer, of a former Juve player. And yeah, like we got him for free. He barely get any, any wage at all. And he doesn't mind sitting on the bench. Yes, he's 34 year old, years old. I normally don't sign players at that age, but I mean, you can't hardly complain about this one, can you? We have one last sub. Locatelli is really tired. It's time to bring in Tonali. Donnarumma with the goal kick. Florenzi. Lorenzi advances, goes for Cristante, Cristante goes for the hat-trick, he finds Moreno, now we have a lot of plays into the box, it goes far for Iguain and a decent try, but uh, not quite good enough. Four minutes of extra time, the clock just ticks away, and uh, maybe something here, probably not, it's just going to be the end game highlight, isn't it? Or maybe not, they keep on playing, now there it is. So, um... I must say, I wasn't pleased with the first half, and even at the beginning of the second, but kind of since Cristante's first goal in 6-7, from that goal, things changed and we actually started performing. Uh, but we still got a little bit, a little bit uh, not, maybe not lucky, but Donnarumma did some really, really good saves early on. And if we wouldn't have made those saves, this could have turned out completely different. But, I mean, we, we got a big win at the end, I'm pleased. Clearly some things left to work with, but since this uh, episode is already far too long, we need to end it there. So as always, thank you so much for watching, 
and I hope you're ex exciting, for, excited for this new season as I am because I'm really looking forward to it. The new formation, I think we're going to score a crazy amount of goals, but we may also risk to concede a lot of goals. But yeah, thank you so much for sharing your time with me and I'll see you in the next episode.